Hey programmers, welcome back. Right now, I wanna give you a lecture on a new topic and that would be about nested loops. So far in the course, we've been using for loops a lot, right? We've been writing somewhat complex code using variables inside of for loops, as well as writing things like if statements inside of for loops. What I wanna do now is actually show you that you can put really any arbitrary code inside of the body of a for loop. And in particular, you can put a loop inside of a loop. So let's jump right in over here. So let's say just in my file, I create a nice for loop and for now it'll be nothing fancy. We'll just have it iterate from i equals one up to and including, let's say i equals five. So i is less than or equal to five. And of course I'll do i plus plus. So this for loop isn't anything too fancy, right? We know how this is gonna behave, but just to be sure, why don't we just run this code as a nice baseline? So when I run this code, I expect this to just print out numbers one through five. And so let me give that a shot. I'll run node and here I'm inside of nested loops.js. And there I see my five numbers printed out. And so what I can do inside of the body of the for loop, remember that I referred to the body of the for loop as these braces over here. What if I put another loop inside, right? So what I'll do is put a for loop right here. And what I'll say is, let me write another for loop and I'll be sure to use a distinct variable calendar, right? So I already used I, right now I wanna be use something different. So I'll just use J. So I'll say j equals one. And maybe this inner loop will iterate while j is less than or equal to three. Then I'll do j plus plus. Cool. And now maybe inside of my inner loop, let me print out both things. So I'll print out i followed by j. So let's see how this code behaves. So if I run this code, we're gonna see a lot of things printed out. Let's try to anticipate you know, how that occurred. So one thing I do want to mention is um, on console.log on line six, what I do is I print out two arguments. Whenever you actually pass multiple arguments into console.log, it'll just separate them with spaces, which is why I see a space between all of my numbers. And if you look at the total output I got, uh, notice the pattern that you kind of recognize. So the first thing I'll notice is every single line of output is kind of like one entire like iteration uh, of these nested loops. When we say nested, that just means we have like code within other code. And the first thing I'll recognize is if I look at the left-hand numbers, that is every I, they don't change very often, right? It goes one, 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 and then two, 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 and so on. However, if I look at the second numbers, that would be all of the J's, those change pretty fast, right? They go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If I look at how my counters change in isolation, they are somewhat predictable, right? So I know that every left-hand number represents an I, and my I's range from one to five, right? From one over here, all the way to five at the bottom. In the same way, my J's, that is my right-hand numbers, range from one through three, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so how can I understand how these for loops behave? Well, I have a for loop inside of a for loop. And what that means is, let's say I enter my outer loop, right? So right now I have I set to one. What am I gonna do? Well, I'm going to start another loop that iterates three times. And it's gonna print out the current value of I, which is always gonna be one, as well as the current value of J, which kind of changes from one, two, and three, right? So that's why I get my first chunk of output over here. And actually, once I'm done running this entire inner loop, that would actually give me the second iteration of my outer loop. So now that means that I is equal to two, and then I start my J loop again, right? So I have I equals two, J equals one, I equals two, J equals two, and so on. And only after I exhaust and finish my entire inner for loop, do I actually increment my I, right? So that's kind of why the left-hand numbers change a lot slower uh, than the right-hand numbers. Uh, something that I'll do to maybe add some clarity is maybe instead of printing out both I and J uh, within the inner loop, what if I only printed out I inside of the outer loop, right? So let me just console.log I over here. And then on my inner for loop, I'll just console.log its counter of J. And just to make things extra clear, I think what I'll do is I'll add some spaces uh, to this line seven. And so let me just add some nice indentation over here. I'll put like a few spaces. Let me go ahead and run this code now. Nice. And so like we said previously, every left-hand number is going to be an I, and every right-hand number represents a J. And here you can see kind of how often these different uh, variables actually increment, right? So on my first iteration, when I enter my outer loop, I have I equal to one, and then I must run the entire J loop, right? All the way through. So one, two, three, that means I'm finished with this J loop, which means now I kind of wrap back around, increment I, now I is two, so I print it over here, and then do the same thing uh, for my J loop, right? Run it all the way through. And so what I can say is my inner loop J 
runs all the way through for every single iteration of i, right? So I'm kind of repeatedly running uh, this J loop, which makes sense, right? Because whatever code I put inside of the body of a for loop, it's going to repeat that number of times. And so maybe to add some more clarity, let me add some relative print statements over here. So right around my inner loop J, what I'll do is console.log and I'll say beginning J. Then I'll also, after that J loop is done running, print out finishing J. Now you can understand the relative order of things over here. So take a moment, try to predict what this will print out. And if I give this code a shot, there I have my output. So let's scroll to the tippy top. And so this code should make some sense, right? So I'm starting at the very beginning. I set I equal to one and I print out I. So that's why I see one over here. And then I must print out beginning J, right? Nothing fancy over there. And then I must run my inner loop all the way through. And I know that my inner loop will just print out numbers from one through three, right? So that's why I get one, two, three over here. And after I'm done running this for loop, I must run any code afterwards, which means I print out finishing J. So that's why I see finishing J over here. And then from there, I'm done with basically this iteration of I, and now I increment I from one, now it's two. So I hop back to the top, I print out I, which is two, and I do the same thing. I begin J, print out one through three, then I finish J, and that continues all the way through. And then from there, it's really just some classic for loop behavior. What I really want us to recognize is kind of the pattern of what happens when you put a for loop inside of a for loop, right? You're gonna repeat the inner loop in its entirety a multiple number of times. So let's say I keep messing around with these for loops. So let me take out some of these console.logs. And I'll switch things up a little bit. Maybe I'll have my inner loop J range from one through four. Then I'll go back to putting my single console.log inside of my innermost loop. So I'll print out I followed by J. And before I actually run this, I kind of want you to anticipate. Uh, you could probably understand like which numbers I'm going to print out, but how many different lines will I actually print out here, right? Do you really understand this code? So let me give it a shot. And the correct answer would actually be, there'll be 20 lines printed out over here. You could probably recognize why that is. Well, I know that my outer loop iterates five times total, and I know that my inner loop iterates four times over, right? However, my inner loop is going to be repeated for every single iteration of my outer loop. So I basically just do five times four, and that would give me 20 total uh, iterations. And that's really useful because I wrote a short amount of code and it actually had a lot of iterations, right? I kind of have a multiplicative effect on the number of iterations, which is awesome. And so these are nested loops that just iterate through some numbers. Why don't we switch things up a little bit? So of course I can also nest loops that iterate through arrays. So what I'll do is let me create an array and see where I just have an array of some colors. What I'll do is let me write an initial for loop that just iterates like we always do all the way through this array, right? So I'll say i equals zero, go while i is less than array.length, then I'll also be sure to do i plus plus. So we'll start by just console.logging every single element of this array. So I'll just print out directly array at index i. Let's run this code. We know exactly how this behaves, right? So what I do is I print out all elements in order and let me actually nest another loop inside. And I wanna watch out for what I mentioned before. I need to be sure to use a distinct counter. So instead of I, I'll just use J over here. So let me start writing that inner loop. So I'll say for let J equal zero and iterate while J is less than array.length and do J plus plus. A very common mistake uh, as you write nested loops is to actually use the same variable in both loops, which in most circumstances you actually don't want. So let me print out the element at index J over here. And kind of like we did before, let me just go ahead and add some indentation to this output. So I'll just put some spaces. Now let's see what we get now. So I should get a very similar behavior to what we saw with just the straight numbers, except now I'm doing it for the elements of this array, right? So let me run nested loops. And there I see it, right? For every left-hand output, that just represents the element at index i that I'm printing out. So I just hold red steady, and then I iterate through all of my other elements. So red, blue, green, orange. And then once I'm done with that, I go to my next element for i. So now i is at blue, and then I go red, blue, green, orange again, and so on and so on. And we can also get the same behavior if we actually put both of these uh, lines of output on the same line. So let me print out all inside of my inner loop the element at array i as well as the element at array j. Let's run this code. And so you should be able to recognize that if I have four elements in my input array and I just use these straight nested loops that iterate over all of them, I should end up with 16 lines of output, right? Because I just do four times four. 
And so let's run this code. And kind of notice what, what information we got out of this array. So kind of what we were able to do in this code is actually write code that prints out every pair of elements of this array, right? I have red, 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 blue, red, green, red, orange, and blue, red, blue, 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 green, and blue, orange, right? And that's actually gonna be a common usage scenario of nested loops, right? They're pretty valuable when it comes to printing out a pairs of elements in an array. And the way I kind of interpret this behavior overall is I keep my left element relatively steady as I hit every right-hand element, right? So now that we've identified nested loops as a pattern that we can use to generate pairs of elements in an array, I do want to point out one thing. So if you look at the list of pairs over here, right, there are 16 of them, and some of them are actually duplicate in a sense, right? For example, if I look at my first bar, I have something like red, red, so I kind of compare an element to itself, and I have other things like blue, blue, green, green, and orange, orange. And so I do have like those self duplicates, but I also have duplicates if I, let's say I don't care about the order of things. So for example, up top over here, I see a red, blue, and I know later on I'm going to hit blue, red. In the same way, I can see blue, green over here, and then later on green, blue. So depending on like the type of logic you want to establish in your code, maybe you don't want these duplicate pairs, right? So what if I wanted to print out all pairs of elements in an array, but avoid the duplicates? So what you can do is actually just manipulate how these for loops actually iterate. So the first thing I really need to recognize is if I look at these two for loops like in isolation of each other, so let me just pretend that like they're kind of decoupled and they're separate. What I know is they actually iterate over the same exact array, right? So of course they're gonna hit the same elements. And so what I wanna do is really manipulate how the counter behaves, right? And so at any point in time, what I want to make sure is that my inner counter, that is my J counter, doesn't reference any elements that the I counter did previously, right? And these are just some numbers. So actually the trick here is when you initialize your inner loop, if you set J equal to zero, you already went wrong, right? Because if I set I equal to zero and at the same time J equal to zero, that means you compare red to red, which is exactly what we want to avoid. So instead of doing that, why don't you begin J at one greater than I, right? So let me set J equal to I plus one. And so what happens now? Well, on the first iteration, I is gonna be pointing to red, and then also the J is gonna be pointing to blue, right? Because I do zero plus one, which is this element over here. And then from there, I'm gonna get red, blue, red, green, and red, orange. And then after that iteration is done, when I loop back around for my I, now I set I equal to one. So my I element's pointing to blue, and now my J begins at I plus one, which means that J is going to begin at the green. And it's gonna hit blue, green, and blue, orange. So just with this single change, I was changing the J equals zero to J equals I plus one, we actually get way less pairs. Let's actually run that code. I see way less things printed out. And in particular, you'll notice that I only have the unique pairs of elements. And that kind of seems like magic, right? How did we just make this small change to establish that logic? If I set J equal to I plus one, that always guarantees that J is greater than I, right? In other words, J will never refer to what I referred to previously. So maybe to make more sense of this, let's actually kind of draw this out in some comments. So let's say I took this array and I'll kind of duplicate it twice over. And this will just be a little thinking exercise. So I have this array of elements, right? And I'm gonna draw it two times over uh, because I have like distinct counters of I and J, but of course in like the code sense, there's only a single array uh, that exists in my computer's memory. So here I have this little sketch right now. And what I wanna do is just show you how these indices flow, right? So let's say we start at the very beginning of this for loop, right? So I set I equal to zero. So I know that the element that I points to will be this red, right? So right now, I is grabbing this red. And then what I do is I start my inner loop and I set J equal to I plus one. Well, I just said that I is equal to zero, right? So that means my J must be zero plus one. So that means J must point to index one, which is the blue element over here. And it actually works out perfectly because the first pair that I want to print out is of course, red, blue, right? That's why my first iteration, I print out the red, blue pair. And notice that right now I'm actually still inside of my inner loop for J, right? So what does J do? Well, it just increments by one. So I do J plus plus, and now I move this pointer to the green, right? J was one, I add one to it, now it's two. Notice that I still stays fixed at zero, right? So now I print out red, green, and there I see it over here. And then after that, I increment J again, because I'm still inside of my inner loop, right? And now 
j is 3, and that means that my element at index 3 is going to be orange, so I burnt out red orange. And now only after I've exhausted this inner loop all the way through, do I actually go back around to incrementing i, right? So now I do i plus plus, i was 0, now it must refer to 1. And kind of the same thing continues, right? So now I must enter my inner loop, j again, for like the second time, the second full time, and I set j equal to i plus 1, so I set j equal to 1 plus 1, so j actually goes to 2, right? Remember that I always set j to be initialized to i plus 1, right? So right now i is 1, that means j is 2. And that gives me the blue-green pair over here. Then I keep flowing in this direction, I increment j, so now I have the blue-orange pair printed out. And then once I finish this inner loop j, I finally increment all the way through for my i loop. And so i goes to this one over here, goes to green. And what I do is I set j equal to i plus 1. So I set j equal to orange, which kind of already is on right here. That gives me my last pair of green-orange, right? And at this point, technically, there would be actually one more kind of empty iteration, right? So I've just finished a full pass for j, and that actually does mean I need to increment i, right? So i was 2, now it refers to 3. And what I try to do is set j equal to i plus 1. Well, that means that j would be set to 4, right? So 4 is kind of out of the range of this array. And if I did that, that means I'd be checking, is 4 less than the length of the array? That is, is 4 less than 4? That's false, so that means I actually exit this for loop and I'm done, right? So that's how I get no duplicates printed out over here. So hopefully now you understand a bit of the magic between using this pattern to avoid duplicates in your array pairs, right? And so overall, I can use this pattern of nested loops and setting j equal to i plus 1 to generate all pairs of elements in an array, uh, but also avoiding the duplicate pairs. It's okay for now if you find this nested loop pattern a little confusing. What I recommend you do is probably watch the last few minutes of this video again. But as we kind of do problems utilizing this pattern, we'll really iron this one out. So don't fret too much. All right, programmers, that's all I got for this one. In the very next video, what we'll do is we'll solve some problems utilizing these nested loops. So stay tuned for that.